Hey, 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 good evening, Life Church. Are you excited about being here tonight? I love it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. He was glad because he knew he was going to hang out with some family. He was going to hang out with some friends. But more importantly, he knew he was going to get to hang out with God because God's Word says that he inhabits the praises of his people. We are so glad to be with you tonight. Hey, do I have anybody here from Spring Hill tonight? I just want to hear about it. Oh, you guys show up. I am so glad. You're worshiping with us from Spring Hill. We're glad to have you worshiping with us online tonight. Great to have you. Give us some hits on the, on the comments. And if you're here from Wesley Chapel, can I hear you tonight? Okay. But I want to remind us as we enter in tonight, we are one house, many rooms. We are one family, many members. And it's just going to be a great night as we come together. But before I do that, I just don't want to remind you tonight that God is going to do something good. God is going to do something great in our hearts and in our lives as we open our hearts to Him. Are you ready to have a good time tonight? Now, before, before we dive into worship, Jessica, come on, bring that over here to me real quick. We've got two giveaways that we want to give away tonight. These are, these are cardboard, just so you know, these are not the real thing. you got to take them out to the merchandise table after service, and they will give you a free album. So if you are here, from, you're a first-time guest tonight. Would you raise your hand? Any first-time guests with us, or are we all family tonight? Okay, we got one over there. Come on, go give it to it. Go on, you get a freebie. Freebie, if it's free, it's for me. There you go. And, and since I know our, our Spring Hill team came from a distance, who wants this before she runs? Come on, somebody from Spring Hill, put your hand in the air. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you're faking it now. You're faking it. You're faking it. She got you. All right. Listen, as we get ready to transition into, transition into worship, David made a statement in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. He said, I will offer to God nothing that didn't cost me something. He said, I'm not going to offer, make an offering to God that is not costly of some nature. There are times in our lives when we can't wait to get to church. We can't wait to stand and praise and worship and express ourselves to God. And then there are those moments, those seasons of life that are just a little bit more challenging, a little bit more difficult to express our love and our devotion and our praise to God. Well, David calls those sacrifices of praise in the book of Psalms. But in Hebrews, we are reminded, therefore by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. What is it? That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So if you're not already on your feet, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. I'm going to ask you to open your heart tonight to all that God wants to say and do in your life. I want you to raise your hands. And I want you to join me as I pray. Let's open our mouths tonight. Let's give God some praise. Let's offer that to Him tonight. Let's invite Holy Spirit to begin to move in our hearts and in our lives right from the very beginning. Holy Spirit, we invite you here tonight. We welcome your presence. We welcome the manifestation of your gifts in this place tonight. God, we know that you want to do something great and mighty in us because you are the great and the mighty God. And we declare tonight, with you, nothing is impossible. So Holy Spirit, would you just come? Just come and God sit in the midst of our praises tonight. Be enthroned on our praise and our worship is lifted up to you as a sweet-smelling fragrance. In Jesus' name, amen.
church. You ready to worship tonight? Come on, put hands together. I see the cross. The cross. When you pour out your love, the empty grave, the promise of hope.
that's a cry of your heart, would you just lift your hands all across this room? Begin to sing that out, not just as a, as a song that we sing or words on a stream, but truly from a place of desperation, of needing a move of God like never before. that the Lord wants to set some people free of some really specific things before I even move on to the next portion of the night. And I just have such a sense that there's somebody here who's been battling depression. Like the doctors have told you that you are depressed, let's put you on medicine, let's do all these things. And I'm not trying to negate the wisdom. But I am saying that I do know the one who with just one very word can create life new and can set a world on its foundation and keep an entire universe spinning. And so if that's you, if you feel like in this moment you need healing from that, we're just gonna claim the name of Jesus over that. And so not gonna call you forward, not gonna do anything to embarrass you, but I'm gonna ask you to do is just to hold your hands out in a receiving manner if that is you. We're gonna pray and just believe that right now the Lord's just gonna meet you where you are. So Father, we just know right now that you, it is your will to heal, Lord. We know based on the shed blood of Calvary that there is healing in the blood of the Lamb. And so right now we just stand and claim that. Lord, your very name is God our healer. And so for this person or persons that have dealt with clinically diagnosed depression, Lord, we submit it to the name of Jesus, knowing that there is gonna be clarity of mind, a stability of emotion, and Lord, that you are going to do what only you can do. Lord, transform us, transform those people by the renewing of their mind, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing right here and right now in Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna go into in just a moment. And if you want, you can sit for a second. We're not gonna sit for long, but, or you can stand, I don't care. But we're gonna sing a, um, a song in a minute and it's called High Place. Um, we released it a couple days ago. And, and I just really have such a sense that this song is, is gonna be just one of those songs that's just like, ah, 
I don't know if you have those songs. You're just like, ah, great. I do. I'm just sitting listening to music. I'm like, ah, that's just me. But there's a, and I want to explain a little like bits and pieces of it. Otherwise, we're going to be singing something. We're going to be like, what are we talking about? Um, And so some of the lyrics go like, I hear a sound, much like a voice that's calling me. Much like a whisper telling my feet where they're going to be. I call you good shepherd. You call me your child. It's my joy just to trust you wherever you go. So that's easy. But the chorus says, to your high place. Take me to your kingdom come. Lead me up the mountain and teach me in your love. Walk me through the garden and then dance with me through Eden's plain. And then meet me on the mountain and teach me in your ways. But in order to understand what we're going to be singing about, we got to go back to the garden. We got to go back to this moment where, where God plants the Garden of Eden, and right in the middle of the Garden of Eden, He plants two trees, okay? It's the tree of life, and then the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, right? It's two trees, and God says, you may not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. And it's in this moment where Adam and Eve are faced with this decision, right? Right? They're faced with this moment where they're standing and they're looking at these two trees. Because a couple of verses back, what happens is God charges them to rule. He says, I need, you are going to rule. You're going to subdue the land, right? In order to subdue the land, you, you, I would think that you would need wisdom, right? And what's really interesting is when Eve wanted this tree, when she was about to take the fruit, it says that she wanted the wisdom that came from it. She wanted the wisdom that came from it. And so not only did they disobey a command from God, but they said in that moment that our wisdom is better than the Lord's wisdom. They put themselves as idols for the first time on the throne that only God is meant to sit on, right? And it starts this moment, or this theme rather, throughout the entire scripture where it talks about people making decisions in encountering the Lord on high places. Time and time and time again. I mean, you see it with Noah. He builds a boat out of trees and he goes and he winds up on a mountain. And what does he do when he gets off that mountain? He makes an altar and he builds it and he makes a sacrifice to the Lord. And it says for the first time, that this altar type of worship had happened. It was a sacrifice of praise. A fragrance rose up to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? He made a covenant to not destroy the earth with water again, right? And there's a couple people, two people, that I want to focus on for a minute. And it's Moses and King Josiah. Now Moses had hit a couple high place encounters. But the one I want to talk about is the second one. And it's when they had just left Egypt. They had just left captivity and they're wandering through the desert and they end up at the base of this mountain. And the Lord says, come up this mountain, I wanna meet with you. And they go, Moses, why don't you head up there? (laughs) So Moses goes and he heads up there and he meets with the Lord and that's where he gets the 10 commandments and he comes back down, right? But what happens when he's up there is he chooses the tree of life because he comes back down with the Ten Commandments, right? He chose the wisdom of God rather than, oh, I can just, I know how to lead these people. And what is so beautiful about this moment is that when Moses comes back down from the mountain, that his face is shining. Because of the time that he spent in the presence of God, his physical appearance changed. And it was different from a high place experience. So as you know, because of that moment with Moses, God began to download more things into him as to what worship, pure and and, and honest worship looked like to God. And thus they set forth the tabernacle, the way that we're meant to worship, right? According to the Old Testament. And then what happens is king after king after king after king either succeed or they fail in upholding these standards. And we get to this moment in 2 Chronicles 23 where King Josiah is now put on the throne of Israel, right? And and what happens is we see how crooked Israel has become. 
we get a little window into all of the things that they had decided to let into their culture and to let into the temple. But what King Josiah does is he says, you know what? I've had enough of that. I'm going to put some things right. So what he does, it says that he goes up these high places and he tears down these things that are called Asherah poles, which are poles that are, that are tributes to foreign gods and other forms of worship, but they're made out of trees, right? And in this moment, King Josiah is choosing the tree of life to reinstitute the things of God. And I'll tell you what, I've noticed that every time or whenever you would see revival and blessing come to Israel, it would happen after these false high places were destroyed. So what about these high places? What on earth do they have to do with this song? Well, Zion is, this, is a parallel term for Israel, right? You fast forward that to the New Testament, it's the church. But look at Psalm 48, it says, Zion city is his home. He lives on his holy mountain, high and glorious, joy-filled in favor. Zion Mountain looms in the farthest reaches of the north, the city of our incomparable king. This is his divine abode, an impenetrable citadel, for he is known to dwell in the highest places. Every single time that these characters in the Bible would wind up on a high place, and when they would choose the tree of life, something beautiful would happen. They'd be able to see farther than they ever could. I mean, think about it for a second. When you climb a mountain, you can see further than you could when you're standing at the bottom of it. That's why the psalmist writes, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Only the pure in heart. Only those who choose the tree of life. But even Jesus dealt with this. Like, whoa, Jesus dealt with this. Well, when the enemy took Jesus and he tempted him, right? The last time he tempted him, he ended up on the highest point of the temple, overlooking all of the world, saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this if you'll worship me. But Jesus says, No, no, no. <laughs> I know this trick. <laughs> Your game hasn't changed since creation, right? He's been doing the same old thing time and time and time again. He's a great perverter of truth, right? And so when you begin to see a situation where it's like, okay, should I choose God's wisdom or my own? You can pretty much know that that's the enemy distorting the truth of God in that moment. And we know how it goes, but Jesus says, you know what? I'm actually going to flip this thing on its head. And by choosing the tree of life, it's going to go through my death. And it's now going to make a way for everybody access to the Father. In Psalm 91, it says, For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you, watch, I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will find and feel my presence even in your time of pressure and trouble. Church, this song is a song of ascent. It's a song that requires a pure heart. It's, it's a song that says, you know what, God? Lead me up this mountain terrain so I can get a closer look at you. I want to gain more of your wisdom in my life. And I want to experience your presence like never before. And I'm convinced, church, that we need to choose the tree of life daily, every single day, submitting to the will of God and saying, God, what do you have for my life? But the reality is I know that there are some places in our hearts where we've chosen the wrong tree, right? Let's be honest and create these false high places in our own heart. These places we've decided that our wisdom is over God's wisdom. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna repent. We're just gonna pray a prayer of repentance and say, God, we are so dependent on you. 
We are so dependent on who you are. And then we're going to take this song and we're going to sing it and we're going to prophesy into our families, into our church. We're going to speak life where there may be death. And we're going to believe that as we do so, God's going to bring those dead things that may look dead and he's going to breathe life into them again. Are you ready, church? Because when we start to reinstitute the ways of worship in pure, unadulterated, God-honoring worship day in and day out, guess what happens? You can't stop the revival of the Lord. So let's all stand to our feet across this place. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. Lord, we just repent if there are any areas in our heart where we have put our wisdom above yours. Where we have said that we know the way when you're saying that you know the way. And so, Father, in this moment, we just recommit our loyalty to you. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as we praise Jesus, as we begin to just worship you in a pure way and reinstitute the things of worship, God, we are just believing that from this moment forward that you would revive the innermost parts of our being. Lord, that you would begin to stir up a revival fire in every single one of us like we've never had before. God, we need it. God, we can't go without it. We can't just go another day of being a normal Christian. God, we need a radical touch from your presence, God. We need you more, and we need you more than we will yesterday, and we need you more now than we will. God, and we just ask right now that in the name of Jesus, God, your presence would fall as we praise your name, God. We love you, and we thank you for what you're going to do.
How many of you believe that God's always doing a new thing? We finished up this song on Friday, so he's doing a real new thing. And we're gonna play it, and we're just gonna believe that it's gonna reaffirm and just point straight up to all that Jesus has done. You in love with Jesus in this place? Come on, are you in love with Jesus Christ in this house?
night. The psalmist said, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Good new song, guys. I really like that. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day and declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among the people. This is what we've done all night. This wasn't a performance. This wasn't about to see how good they are or how talented or gifted they are. It's been all about how we can point people to Jesus. Because the next verse says this, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. That's why it gets loud. That's why it gets intense. That's why you build tension in the room with your music. I just, just ah, yeah, it's good stuff. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. Thanks for bringing that teaching, by the way. That was good. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory do his name. That's all we've done tonight. We've acknowledged how great and how mighty, how merciful, how compassionate, how loving, how forgiving he is. And we've simply languaged it with lyrics and carried it with melody. Then he says, bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's what tonight was all about. Christian Amber team, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Life Church, for coming out tonight to be the choir. So God could be the audience. Come on, give him some praise. It's been a great night. Now, before I let you go, a couple of quick announcements. Out in the foyer to my right, your left, is our merchandise table. The CDs from tonight and some other stuff that's out there. I'm not, I don't have a whole list of it. It's out there. Album releases tonight, November 8th. Then also want to remind you of Thanksgiving in a box. If you haven't stopped out there yet and grabbed your, uh, your box for the families coming up at Thanksgiving, we would really encourage you to do that. It's an opportunity for us to show this community where we live, both here in Wesley Chapel and the team is doing it in Spring Hill as well. It's our opportunity to show the love of God in a very tangible and practical way. So we want to encourage you to do that. And then just one last thing is sit here, bring an offering. Um, if you brought your offering with you tonight, you still have the opportunity to give. There's always those ways to give on the screen. You know, you give online, you need text to give, etc. But there's also the receptacles on the walls as you are leaving the sanctuary, as you're leaving the auditorium tonight. Has it been a great night? Does anybody, I mean, are you really glad you came tonight? One more time, would you say thank you and an applause to our team here? our team at the front of house and our team in the production room and our cameraman you guys lighting you guys did a fantastic job thanks for letting us come along on your journey god bless you you have a great rest of your week be safe with the stormy weather it might be coming later